Hi folks, Jack in the training department here and welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we've got kind of a unique safety valve and I haven't seen one in this configuration before but what we've got is a an electrical solenoid and then a, a more standard basotrol safety valve. And you'll hear these called a baso, B-A-S-O, or a basotrol valve. And normally they're on a smaller base. But in this case, we've got uh, what looks like either an indirect action valve or a regulator assembly. And then this second electrical solenoid. And when we look at the labeling for this, we can see it, it's a 120 volt, 60 hertz solenoid. And you can see it's set up here, natural or LP, up to one half PSI. So what's probably going on here is whatever this gets installed in has a, a standing pilot, and this is the pilot safety valve. And then whatever calls for heat in that system energizes the solenoid. So we could be turning a burner on or off with this. Uh, and our pilot gas will flow through this part of the assembly, so the pilot would stay lit all the time. But because we have this standing pilot here, that this probably does not have any kind of electronic ignition system on it. And we save a little bit in the assembly cost that way. So let's take this apart and I'll, I'll walk you through how it all works here. First thing to note, it's all put together with Torx screws. And we've talked about Torx before. They're kind of these star-shaped fasteners. But this particular valve is almost entirely put together with Torx. So let's pop off this Basotrol first. So we've got our main safety portion here. And you can see there's a, a plunger and it goes down into... Let's see, this is interesting. It looks like this is designed to have a diaphragm in it, but there is no diaphragm there. So for this particular configuration of the valve, they don't have any kind of diaphragm there. We'll open that up in a minute. But the, uh, the body down inside there, there's no diaphragm. It's just empty. But the gas flow arrow shows that this would be our incoming gas, so this would be the, the first area that we would have gas in the valve. So the, the gas would be in this area, around the outside of the plunger, and to get the gas to flow through, we need to get this plunger lifted up. And it lifts up off of the seat here. Now to get this plunger to lift up, we're going to use an interesting setup. And what we'll do is use a thermocouple. So this is just a standard Robert Shaw service thermocouple. And you can see it threads in into this threaded opening. And on the inside of the valve, there's some wiring down inside there. And so we'll demonstrate here real quick what's actually happening when you warm up a thermocouple. So this is an electrical connection, so it's got to be clean. It's got to be dry. You don't put any thread lock or anything in there. And you can see when we push the button, we, we push that plunger down, but in the valve, that, that valve would stop the plunger from going all the way down. So we push the button in and out, nothing really happens. So now we're going to warm up the thermocouple, and that thermocouple will generate some electrical energy for us. And inside of here is an electromagnet. And you'll see that electromagnet can draw this and hold it up once we get some heat on here. So, we'll be a little noisy for a second. So normally this would be your pilot flame and you would have this valve pushed down in. And your pilot flame would be warming the thermocouple.
All right, so we've got enough heat on the thermocouple now that when we push this down in and let it go, that electromagnet draws the plunger back up with it. So the spring that's pushing the button back out is also drawing in this plunger when that button travels back. Now you saw there, when this thermocouple got cool enough, we lost our current to our electromagnet and we dropped that plunger back. So we've just, we're right on the edge of having enough and now we're too cool. We don't have enough current anymore. So it's a real simple setup. So let's go ahead and take that out. We'll set that back off to the side. And let's see if we can open it up here and see how it works. Oh, need a different one. Be right back. All right, so we've got a T15 that we can use to get this little cover open. And should be able to show you how the gas flow path works inside here once we get that opened up. So you can see a spring coming out there. And there's this little tiny plunger. And what's going on in there is that when we push this in, that little tiny plunger moves in and out. And it's going to be hard to see. And that's right at the bottom of the travel. And that little plunger pops out and allows gas to flow through this part of the valve. So this part of the valve is isolated from all the rest of the valve. And all that happens here is we let our pilot gas flow through. Now in the event that we have enough heat on our thermocouple, when we lift this up, this will stay open. Part of drawing that plunger mechanism up in keeps this valve open. And you can see there's just a very small pin and a little tiny machine plunger. Let's see how far apart we can get this thing. All right, so we've popped off the red plastic cap. We've got a spring retainer inside. And once we work this spring retainer off, we should be able to get the rest of this assembly out. Oh, there goes the spring and the retainer. Yep, so now we should be able to pop this out. Yep. So you can see it's soldered down into the, the casing here. But this is the electromagnet. This is the coil that actually interacts with our plunger. So when we push the button down, it compresses this electromagnet over the, the plunger. And then when we let go, it pulls the entire assembly back up. So now that we've got this apart, we can hook our thermocouple back up here and I can show you exactly what's happening inside this valve. So we're going to heat the end of our thermocouple. See if we can make enough voltage here to get that to stick. You can see it's starting to stick there. So there now it's got enough current from that thermocouple that it's able to hold the valve shut, or in this case open. It's able to hold the valve open. And then if we were to loosen this up and break that electrical connection, pops back apart. Really simple system. 
The way that these usually fail is uh, the thermocouple will burn out, like the element in the tip here will burn out, or the mechanism inside here will start to get sticky, like it'll have oil that gets in there and, and starts to get gummy or hard. Or you can potentially break these connections too inside here, because these do move every time you cycle the valve. So over time these will weaken and eventually break. But that's this part of the valve, so it's pretty simple. And you can see the little pin that we talked about earlier on the, the pilot gas side actually sticks down. Let's see if I can push it through so you can see it. it sticks down through into the inside of that cavity. You can see it kind of right down in here, this right here. And that is riding against the side of this plunger. You can actually see the little wear strip there where that pin rode against the side of the plunger. So it's kind of keyed in there against that pin. So really simple setup, but pretty reliable. So we'll set that off the side. So let's take a look inside this regulator housing. Yeah, so the valve's clearly set up to, to have something else inside it, and in this case it just doesn't have anything. Looks like it would actually support a poppet-style regulator with a, a cap on it that would let us adjust that, but it's just not there. So they left the space open and the gas just flows through. Interesting. Now let's pull off the solenoid. So there's nothing else left in this valve body. And you can see that it just sits against this ceiling surface and when it lifts up the gas can flow through to the outlet. And again, oh, I go to the screws. The inside here, we've got our little diaphragm and it's riding on a little piece of like spring steel almost. That little cutout piece down inside there acts like a spring brings it back to the closed position. But if you think about the physics here, when this thing is assembled, the gas pressure around the outside is pushing against the back of this, back of this little ceiling surface. So the spring really just has to bring it to a closed position. The gas pressure itself actually keeps it closed. Now this style valve is notorious for a couple of issues. Now let's pop apart this spring clip here. So inside this valve is this. And this little surface here you can see has been peened over like a rivet. And this is the weak link of this valve. When this is used to control a main burner, every time that this device cycles open and closed, this steel washer moves this fraction of an inch against this rolled edge. And over time this edge will wear and wear and wear and eventually it will pop off. Now this used to be a bigger problem, but you can see that they've actually come in and put like a little reinforcement in here. There's like a very small steel washer, and that's to protect this very soft rolled edge from the, the washer smacking into it. So they've made an attempt here to make this more reliable. Uh, I have not seen any fail with that reinforcement in there, but prior to that they would wear through the edges of this lip, and then this plunger would not lift. You would energize the solenoid, you would hear it thunk, because it would be lifting up the steel washer, but it would not actually be lifting the plunger because that rivet had worn through. So that was at one time a very common failure method for these. Now the solenoid itself has a piece of protective tape over it, and this is uh, that high temperature protective tape we see sometimes, like a Kapton I think it's called. 
and it's just in there to protect any kind of arcing from happening against metal surfaces. So that's about it. I don't think I can get that any further apart. I can try. Let me try and see if that'll pop apart in there. Get that cap on out of the way. Looks like that might be spot welded. Does not feel like that's going to come any further apart. I can pop off this part. So this cover, with the cover off, we can see how this is set up, right? We've just got two little iron cores with a copper winding around it and when that copper winding energizes it draws this steel washer up it becomes an electromagnet pulls that steel washer up but that's about it there's not a lot of a magic in these things it's just a series of simple concepts all pushed together into one component these basitrol valves are, are really common so understanding how they work and how they fail helps quite a bit. But everything else in here is pretty straightforward. All right, thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www dot smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.